In this lesson, we'll be talking about surface creation for toolpath setup. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create surfaces to fill in geometry, demonstrate the differences in using delete and solids and surface tool sets, use patch, and use revolve. For this next lesson, we want to get started by uploading the supplied file Forming Die Surface Edits. Now, this is a bit of an additional video to talk about some tools that we haven't really used in our course. We haven't done much surfacing, but surfacing tools can be very handy to CAM programming. So what we want to do is we want to just explore some options that we have when working with files and creating surfaces. So this is a part that we've already seen before, and we looked at it when we were creating some multi-axis toolpaths. But what we want to talk about now are different ways that we can use our direct modeling tools to change the geometry. And these are things that we've done before by copying bodies and removing features. But we also want to explore how we can use surfacing to create a representation of the body that we can use to select for things like roughing or finishing and keep the tools from dropping into certain areas. Now this model obviously has features in the timeline for some of these but we're going to pretend that those aren't there and we're going to focus just on the tools to create the geometry. The first thing that I want to do is I want to identify the location of access to the tools. So inside of our user interface we have our solids tools, then we have surface, sheet metal, and a tools section. We're going to be looking at the surface section which has a lot of the same or very similar tools to solids. We can create new components, we can create sketches, and we also have some basic features like extrude, revolve, and sweep that we see inside of the solid section. However, you'll notice that the icons are different colors because the orange represents our surface tools. We also do have some unique tools such as trim, extend, stitch, unstitch, and reverse normal. These are things that we don't see on solid tools and are only going to apply to our surfaces. To get started, I'm not going to worry about activating a component or creating a new component. I'm just going to worry about working with these tools. So if we wanted to start working with this model and we decided that we needed a version of it that didn't have these slots or pockets in them, with our direct modeling tools, we can come in and we can select geometry like these faces and hit delete on the keyboard and allow it to patch. However, that only works when we're working in the solids tool set. When we're working in the surface tool set, it actually will just remove those features and now we're working with a surface body. If we expand our forming die and if we expand the upper die in the bodies folder, notice that now we're dealing with a surface body. In the timeline, if I delete that feature, it turns back into a solid body. In our solid tool set, if we use the same operation, select the same faces and hit delete, all it does is it patches that geometry. It removes it just like it does with the surface tools, and then it fills it in. It pretends like it was never even there. So this is the first difference I want to make sure that we identify. When you're using direct modeling tools like delete to try to remove features, you want to make sure that you're in the solid tool set. If you're in the surface tool set, you'll actually just be converting this to a surface body. So again, keep that in mind. It is a different way to approach those tools. Next, if we wanted a version of this, but we didn't want to copy it and make all these edits to it, and we just needed the outside surface so that our tools aren't dropping into these pockets, we could do that by creating a copy and removing them in the solid tool sets in the workspace, but we could also create a revolved surface. In this case, that works because of our geometry. In other cases, it might not work out quite the same, but we can still use these surface tools to our advantage. I'm going to start by creating a sketch, I'm going to use my default plane, so I'm looking at it from the back. Then under Create, I'm going to go to Project Include and Intersect. And I want to intersect the fillet and all the geometry I need all the way down to the center. Once I have all that, I'll say OK. View this from the back again. And now I'm going to use my Line tool. I'm going to draw a line that's vertical. And then I'm going to make this construction. So this is just going to represent my axis of revolution for right now. Notice that the line in the center is continuous, which means that we're not going to be able to use this as a revolve. It needs to end at the line or the revolution axis. So we could use tools like trim, but trim doesn't work on projected geometry. 
It doesn't allow us to trim this. It only allows us to trim the line that we created. So we can trim the line that we created to this vertex. And then from here, what we can do is create a new line on top of this, hit escape, select the original projected line, and convert it to construction. That way it won't be included in a selection. Now we're going to finish our sketch, go to our Create Revolve. For our profile, we can select this region, and notice that we have chaining turned on, but because we're dealing with projected geometry, we're going to have to manually select all the way to our center line. And if we have trouble selecting any geometry, always remember that you can hold the left mouse button down and it'll bring up a selection dialog box. Notice that it also had the axis of revolution pre-selected. So if we start over, selecting our profile, making sure that we go all the way down to the center, then the axis of revolution can either be the Z axis in this case or the sketch that we created then we're going to be creating a new surface body. The new surface body is the entire outside shape of that part. So this allows us to create a representation that we can select when we're creating a toolpath, but we can still maintain the original that allows us to get into those internal edges and create toolpaths based on those selections. So in some cases, this option might take a good bit longer than just doing a copy in the direct modeling tools. But in other cases, this might be the only option that you have. Sometimes the delete feature on solid geometry just doesn't work. It just isn't able to patch it, especially if it's an imported model. You might have more trouble. Let's take a look at a few other surface tools that can be helpful for this specific example. If we were trying to program this part and we didn't want the tool to come down into this area, we can just select from this face out. But if we wanted to create a version of this part that had a flat top on it, we could use the create patch feature. We can select this edge and we can create a new face that creates a flat top for this part. So again, it simplifies the selection process when we're trying to initially rough this out. Again, this is very much based on your specific geometry. Every model is going to be a little bit different. Sometimes you'll be able to easily create geometry like this and sometimes you'll have a much harder time and maybe some direct modeling tools will help. If we go back to edit, I want to make a note of a few things. Inside of our edge selection, we have the option to maintain tangency, a curvature relationship, or just a connected. Because we selected an edge that's relatively flat, we don't really have a problem with this. But if we were to try to patch based on this edge, we could turn on tangency, or we could turn on a curvature relationship, and it would change the way that it's being patched. We can also reverse the direction if we need to. And notice that we're creating a dome on top of the part. Again, this is based on either tangency or curvature, which controls the influence that the surrounding curvature has on it. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And notice that this part has a different color or appearance to it. This is because surfaces have sides. While all the solid geometry is the same color, the back side of a surface is this sort of brownish color. And the outside is going to take on the material of the part, in this case steel. In order to fix that, we go to Modify, Reverse Normal, and we can flip just this section around. So again, these tools can be very helpful to take geometry that's either imported or created in Fusion and make some bodies, in this case some surfaces, that can help us fill in voids or holes or areas where we don't want the tool to go in just yet. I urge you to continue to play around as many of these features are very similar to the solid geometry, such as extrude, which is looking for, in this case, an open or a closed sketch. But we can also take a look at things like sweep and loft and offset. If we want to convert this to a solid, we can do that using thicken. We can create an offset and patch the ends. We can also do something called boundary fill and use portions of this surface to connect with a solid and create one single solid body. It's a little bit outside of what we're going to be talking about here, as we really want to focus on the tools that are most helpful to the machining process. So from here, let's make sure that we save this file before moving on.